Hi, I'm Dale Kislik, and today's video is all about my thoughts on the Silky Katana Boy 650 folding saw, the world's largest folding saw, and we're going to put it up against your standard bow saw of comparable size. First, let's take a look at the Silky Katana Boy 650. Uh, in terms of design. It's got a 25 and a half inch blade. That's 65 centimeters long. It's got a 32 inch handle, okay, which is 82 centimeters long. Uh, the price tag for this is between 240 to 290 dollars depending on where you go. Now that's in Canadian dollars. Uh, it's a professional quality saw. If you just want to replace the blade, it's going to cost hundred dollars for just replacing the blade. Uh, it's available in specialty stores and uh, arborist supply shops. Uh, it comes with a nylon sheath and that nylon sheath has a pocket uh, in which you can put another replaceable blade. And we're going to see in this video just exactly how well it performs uh, in comparison to this saw which is your standard bow saw. A good size for a bow saw, at least uh, the size that I would recommend that you take into the woods with you uh, is armpit to fingertip long so measured like that that blade will be about 30 inches long this saw can be purchased just about anywhere and the price range goes anywhere from twenty dollars to forty dollars for the complete saw and blade together they're simple they're durable uh, you can get replacement blades for them for anywhere from eight to fifteen dollars for per blade so if you compare price alone you can buy 10 to 12 of these bow saws complete with the blade for the same price as one of these so that's something that you'll want to consider when looking at purchasing one of these saws let's compare the portability of the two saws first the silky katana boy well of course it folds into uh, this nice relatively small parcel it is somewhat heavy but it's somewhat streamlined so you can throw it into a backpack it weighs about 2.8 pounds okay or 1.2 kilograms so that is fairly significant for a tool to be packing around all day and it's 32 inches long so it's a little too long to fit in a canoe barrel um, but it would fit in your backpack it's a little bit too long to just kind of attach to your hip and hang from your hip it'll kind of bounce and swing all over the place as far as the uh, bow saw portability goes, well, they're really lightweight, but they're kind of bulky. They take up quite a bit of space when packing them along. So uh, they'll weigh about 1.5 pounds or 700 grams, which is half of what the Silky Katana Boy weighs. And the one thing uh, as far as packing goes that I often use is I'll often carry it over my shoulder. And when I get tired of that, I can always switch to the other shoulder. And if I get tired of that, I can just walk with it in my hand. And it's light enough that that doesn't become too bothersome um, packing it around for a day. Regarding the depth of cut, the Silky Katana Boy has virtually no limits. You can cut a log as thick as you can imagine. Whereas, when using a bow saw, you are restricted by your depth of cut as you cut down through the log. If the log is much bigger than the one that you see here, then the top of the saw begins to get stuck and hit the top and you will be forced to then take the saw out and cut from below. So there is a bit of a limit to what the bow saw can do. The larger the D, the, the greater the diameter of tree that you can cut down with it. But the Silky Katana Boy, no limit. The Silky Katana Boy only cuts on the pulling motion when you pull like this. It does not cut when you push the blade forward. Whereas, with the bow saw, it will cut on the pull and it will also cut on the push. Let's count the strokes used and measure up the difference in depth of cut. First, Silky Katana Boy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 
14, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now the bow saw. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So the lower mark is the Silky Katana Boy 650 and the upper mark is the bow saw. Um, really the Silky Katana Boy was only cutting on the pull stroke. So you could say it was only cutting in 10 strokes compared to the 20 strokes that were done above with the bow saw because it cuts, the bow saw cuts forward and reverse or pushing and pulling. With that in mind, the Katana Boy is twice as fast. <laughs> when cutting trees that are laid right on the ground, the Silky Katana Boy uh, works out okay, but you are limited by the amount of follow through that you have, or you have to reposition the log or reposition the way that you cut in order to give yourself room for the follow through, which is way back to here. Also, logs on the ground are a little bit awkward to cut with two hands, and oftentimes, you need to get that other hand up here to hold the thing stable or put a foot against it. So you're forced to cut with one hand. How does the Silky Katana Boy measure up when having to cut with one hand low to the ground? So it does work, but my follow through is tending to hit the ground behind me and get a little jammed up. With technique and practice, this is not something that cannot be overcome. When using a bow saw, you don't have to worry about the long handle reaching way back here. One-handed operations are easy, and in fact, the bow, the bow saw is very good with one-handed operations and two-handed operations. On many occasions when you're out in the woods, uh, you need to cut in tight, close quarters. Uh, you may be selecting or pruning out certain trees, like for example this one, or this one out of a multi-stemmed tree, where there's all kinds of other trees close in and it's very tight. And this is where you run into problems with bow saws. Often because of that bow, it will not give you the free range of motion that you require to get a good full stroke and do the cutting. In this case, it's bumping into that tree. If I wanted to cut this one back here, there's no way that bow saw is even gonna fit inside there. And it doesn't matter what angle I come at, I really can't get close to that one tree if I wanna selectively prune that one out. However, the Silky Katana Boy overcomes that issue because it's a folding saw and it doesn't have the bow on the back side. And you can just knife it in to small areas and get still get that full stroke without it hitting on adjacent trees. So I can take it, swing it around right in here and knife it right in and find multiple opportunities to be able to cut this tree right out of the middle of a multi-stemmed group of trees. And just like that, it's through. Wow, that was quick, that was easy. The bow saw wouldn't have been able to get in there, not from this angle anyways. Let's have a look at the uh, safety aspects of the saws with the Silky Katana Boy. Uh, it has a locking pin right here that you turn to loosen off until it is in a spot where you can push down this lever like that. You push down that lever that releases the blade from its locked position and it allows you to open the Silky Katana Boy. Now take a look at those teeth. 
Wow, those are really something. Uh, it requires the utmost care when you're working with this saw. So you really have to be careful and mindful and not rush the opening procedure. Once it gets into place, it locks with that the lever. There's a locking mechanism and then you can push down or tighten down this pin and prevent it from unlocking accidentally. When you go to close it, you have to unscrew the locking pin, push in that lever and then start to bring it closed. Now Silky has added a second stage lock right there which prevents it from completely closing right onto your fingers. If that, uh, if that happened, oh my gosh, would you hurt your fingers. So then you have to press the lever a second time to get it to close all the way. And this is where you really don't want to have your fingers stuck inside there. Now, I just want you to see something that, that I already ran up against in using my Silky Katana Boy. If you see this channel, this narrow channel right here, that's where the blade fits right in. And upon using this saw, I discovered that as I go to close it for the last bit of the operation, the teeth are binding up on that channel a little bit and they're actually bashing into it and preventing the, the saw from closing all the way. This, this channel may have been narrowed as I was using it and is causing that issue and the teeth are actually hooking on there, which, you know, it kind of makes you want to push a little bit harder which makes it more dangerous and what I found I have to do is kind of twist and wiggle that blade a little bit to get those teeth to pass cleanly into that channel. So that's something to consider. You may find that your saw does that or it could be just an issue with this particular one. As far as your typical uh, bow saw and safety goes, uh, the same thing applies as far as sharpness of teeth go. They still will cause quite a painful cut uh, across your, your skin and so you want to avoid that as much as possible. What I would recommend is trying to find a small fire hose or a garden hose or some manufactured or do-it-yourself way of protecting those teeth and keeping them covered when you're walking and the saw is not in use. Uh, walking with a saw without a sheath on it lends itself to uh, a dangerous cut should you fall or trip or accidentally brush it on your clothing. It snags clothing and catches on clothing and, and causes all those issues. One of the things you want to do is make sure and set yourself up so your material is held fast in one spot. and. Uh, doesn't wiggle around because uh, it's dangerous when these things are wiggling around the saw can bounce out and bounce across your hand or across your knee so you want to make sure that you come up with ways to solid everything up and prevent wobbling so you can pin it against your, your thigh and hold it with your hand and one of the things that I'd like to show you now is uh, what a lot of people do a, a mistake that they make is when cutting like this they'll put their hand right beside the saw uh, these types of saws tend to jump and bounce when you're starting them and they can bounce right out of the hole and they can hop right up and go right across the back of your hand. It's a terrible, terrible cut. It's very painful. It's like little razor blades being dragged across your hand. So a, a way to overcome that is to simply put your hand through the bow and cut on the other side of it. And you've overcome any possibility for it to skip out and, and cut your hand. Positioning it against my knee in there and I'm shoving that end down there right down there into the ground so now that my, my material is held fast and solid. And with the bow saw one-handed operation very easily done right here in the woods. Nice, just like that. Good, now with the silky katana boy we can do the same thing but again with practice and experience you'll come up with ways to set yourself up knowing that you have such a long saw you'll have to just position yourself and prop yourself up against things in such a way that you can make the cut safely and you can also just as we did with the bow saw hop your hand over to the far side and eliminate any potential to cut yourself and go ahead and saw away. So not ideal one-handed operation but it still does the trick. With a little practice you'll just get better. Nice. 
Another uh, important uh, cutting operation with saws uh, is working on very small fine material. So for example if I just look around right here, here's a small stick that's roughly thumb size or finger size and there is many occasions when you're bushcrafting or, or doing projects in the wood or wilderness living where you need to cut up small material into small workable parts. Well the bow saw really excels in one type of cutting operation uh, that the silky katana boy does not and it looks like this. You can position the saw on the ground or even against a tree, put it against your chest, stick a foot in there and hold the saw nice and firmly and move the material instead. So let's say that I want to get a little piece, a little plug about that big cut from this material. Well it becomes very easy to do when you move the material up and down the saw, just like that. And now I'll cut the other side and it cuts through really nicely. Now let's take this further and see how small we can get it. This would be very difficult to do if I reversed it, tried to hold the material and run that saw on top of it. It's very difficult, but by propping the saw up in this fashion, I can cut a very small piece down to almost nothing. Yeah, look at that, look how small we're getting. Now with the silky katana boy, I haven't figured out a way to do that particular operation with this saw. Uh, the reason being, well, the length of it, you can't really lean on it. I've tried different things like this and, you know, kind of positioning that end in there and working it like that. But to be honest with you, those teeth are like a centimeter long or half an inch long. They're just so nasty and so dangerous. I really don't want to work close to them because I'm pretty sure I'll end up bleeding. So uh, I kind of haven't found a way to, to effectively do that yet with this saw. So if anything, this is kind of the one place where a bow saw beats out the folding saw for that particular type of uh, operation with small material. Yeah. Oftentimes you end up having to limb trees, whether they're living like this one or they're dead on the ground and you're just taking off the branches. Both saws will work well to limb. They'll both do the job. However, the silky katana boy does the job just a little bit better. And here's why. You can knife the saw into tighter areas than you can with the bow saw. You've got this tremendous reach. I can reach out, I bet you I'm at 10 feet above my head to take limbs down. So I got a much greater reach way up high than I do with a bow saw. It barely takes one pull and some of those branches are off. One pull and two pulls. Oh. <laughs> and I just snipped through. Somebody who doesn't know a lot about sawing will try to saw through a log like this. Saw, 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 saw. The proper way to saw is by using the full length of the blade. And it should look like this. Saw, 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 saw. The reason that I pick an arm's length as the ultimate size for a bow saw is because when you work your arm forward and back like this, the length of your arm gives you a nice complete full stroke. Saw, 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 saw. I could even go another six inches longer to a 36 inch blade and still do fine. Saw, saw. That's the proper way to use it in both of these saws. And it's the same with the katana boy. You want to use the full length of that blade every time you cut. That's the maximum efficiency with a full stroke. All right. There is another advantage that the silky katana boy has over a bow saw. 
it's a distinct advantage. The depth of this blade right here and the straight profile of that blade tends to keep your saw cut going straight down. With the bow saw, what ends up happening a lot of the time is it's quite flexible in here. This will twist this way and that. It's not that hard for it to lose its straightness. And as you're working that saw, because it does, isn't very deep as far as the thickness of blade goes, it can start to curve sideways, especially after it's worn out, especially when someone inexperienced has been using it and they start cutting like this and fl up, flopping the top all over the place and bending and twisting the saw blade. Sometimes in, in particularly catchy wood, when it, it really gets stuck in there and you push really hard, you can actually flex the blade right here as you're trying to push it through or muscle it through and that causes little bends in the blade. So once these types of saw blades are bent, it's very frustrating and very uh, challenging to overcome. At that point you can try and sharpen it straight, but good luck with that. That can also be frustrating. You're almost better to just buy a new blade, which is inexpensive. And you can replace a lot of blades and a lot of saws like this for the cost of one silky katana blade. So uh, this kind of excels as far as straightness of cut and maintaining a nice straight even cut, which is really great. A couple of trees, get pressure on it like that. And then you're good to go. You really need Let's to talk about sharpening these saws. If you're the type of person who enjoys uh, investing time in learning how to sharpen your tools, then uh, I would say go for it. Can you sharpen these saws? Absolutely you can, but you're going to have to invest a lot of time uh, researching um, how to do that, the different uh, type of teeth configurations. You're going to have to learn a lot about angles and what files to use and it's going to take some practice before you get really good at it. Uh, with the bow saws, it's not really that big of an issue to just replace your, your uh, blades after they've kind of run their course, because they're inexpensive. The Silky Katana Boy, that's a different story though. Um, for myself, I know I'm going to uh, search on the internet and learn whatever I can about saws and sharpening of saws and see if I can't come up with the right tools to become proficient at sharpening this saw because it is quite a investment of money to purchase. I want to make sure that I know how to maintain it and keep it and and have it last for a good long time. That's awesome. Let's talk about conclusions on as far as how the Silky Katana Boy 650 measures up against your typical or standard bow saw. Well, here's my thoughts on the Silky Katana Boy. Uh, to me, this is a personal, uh, personal tool, uh, a personal saw. Um, this isn't something that I'm about to share with anybody. You know, the, the first thing that's going to happen when somebody sees a saw like this, they're going to go, whoa, that's awesome, man. Look at that sweet saw, right? You look like a samurai warrior, right? And they're going to want to put it to use. But uh, I hold it in the same category as my Skookum Bush Tool knife. I paid a lot of money for this knife, and I spend a great deal of time making sure that the edge is in great shape. Uh, I spend a lot of money on the Silky Katana Boy saw, and I spend a lot of effort making sure that it's taken well, well taken care of. So I'm not going to just let people use it. When they ask to use my saw, I'm going to have to say I'm sorry. No, it's dangerous. It's a very dangerous saw, especially if you don't know what you're doing and haven't experience, haven't got any experience with using saws like this. And I don't want them to abuse it and break it. So it's not really for groups. It's not really for courses. It's not really for. Uh, putting out there and just letting people go for it with this saw. That's my my opinion on that. Um, if it gets damaged, I want the person who damaged it to be me, not somebody else, because then I'm going to be mad at those other people and I don't even want to be in that place. Uh, as far as the saw personally for me goes, I give it uh, top marks. I think it's absolutely awesome. I give it thumbs way up. Um, I'm so glad that I purchased it and this will be my go-to saw for my trips and my excursions out into the woods uh, But it's going to be personal use only the silky katana boy 650 Surpasses your typical bow saw in just about every single way uh, 
just about every single way except for price or cost and except for working with very small material as I showed earlier in this video. But other than that, it kicks butt. This saw is amazing. Now let's talk about bow saw. Uh, if I'm used doing courses, classes, demonstrations, instructions, any kind of thing like that, teaching, uh, these are the saws I'm gonna put in front of people because they're great beginner saws. They're great for learning. They're great for sharing. They're great for beginners or anybody to just grab and go for it. And if they get beat up or bent or the blade cuts crooked or they get rusted, which often happens to the blades, you don't really care. It's not a big loss. And so that's where they fit in. Each saw has its place. Uh, each saw is a workhorse and each saw will serve you well. And for me, as I said, it's just a matter of personal preference for my own personal cherished tools and for that the silky katana boy <laughs> it rocks and and i love it that's all for now please feel free to check out my other videos i have a whole bunch of videos on bushcraft survival canoeing and drum circles and also check out our website and go to uh, www.naturealiveprograms.com where you can get to know us there. You can see all the courses and offerings that we're doing all year round. We have an online store. We're selling uh, books, we're selling DVDs, uh, we're selling wool clothing, and uh, we have a bunch of trips planned up in the upcoming year. So make sure you check us out. Hope to see you out in the bush someday. Boy, it cuts through that green wood like crazy. Unbelievable. Beautiful cuts.